Hi, you are watching. In the previous chapter, Luchin entered the poisonous mist forest. However, the monster respawn rate there was faster than he expected, leaving no time for his subordinates to recover. With the poison in the air causing debuffs, it was only a matter of time before Lu Chen's subordinates died. In response, he had to leave the forest and devise another plan. Luckily, he had acquired enough equipment with poison resistance embedded in it. So, Lu Chen recruited another batch of werewolves and resumed his grinding in the poisonous mist forest. In just a few days, he had obtained numerous items and achieved a three-star quality upgrade that promoted him to a werewolf commander. And due to the number of poisonous spiders he had killed, the bloodline of the spider became available in the reputation store, which Luchin didn't hesitate to unlock it and level it up to three, enhancing his normal attack with poison damage, and increased his movement speed by 19%. To his surprise, it also transformed him into a hybrid werewolf with the spider's huge cheeks. Nevertheless, he ain't complaining, as he was now more nimble than before. But before he could resume his grind, Luchin took the opportunity to visit other players and teach his haters a lesson they wouldn't forget, by violating them, and at the same time, preventing them from killing Zakas, which instantly devastated the players, leaving them no choice but to turn to only I'm wild for answers. This outcome delighted Lu Chen, as it was part of his plan to establish himself as a trustworthy source of information. This would allow him to sell his items at higher prices and possibly start selling them earlier than planned. So, he promptly provided them with the necessary information, which they appreciated. With that settled, he continued to hunt Zakas once more. Now on to the next part. The next day arrived. Lu Chen and his gang ventured deeper into the poison mist forest, and since their equipment sets were almost complete, they decided to explore further. To his surprise, the scenery became more beautiful as they approached the center of the forest, as the lavender aesthetic of the poison mixed with the tall green bamboo trees created a natural and captivating view, which Lu Chen appreciated. However, this also meant that the monsters here were different, therefore, he proceeded with caution, and just as he expected, a snake monster appeared in front of them, but he was still taken aback, as the quantity of the snakes was more than the spiders he encountered before. In response, he commanded the three idiots to attack first to assess the situation, which they didn't hesitate to follow, engaging with the massive snake, and as he observed their battle, Lu Chen was surprised to see that his subordinates were still taking poison damage despite wearing suits with a poison resistance of 19. So it became evident that the opponent's poison attack had a strength of 20, the same as the level 9 elite spider woman. With this realization, Luchin finally understood the true danger of this place. 10 minutes later, the number of snakes kept increasing. With this, Luchin began to wonder if this game intended to torture players with the sheer volume of these creatures. However, this game wasn't going to outmatch him since he was prepared for a lengthy battle, as he had already collected enough potions, so he distributed 80 bottles to each of his subordinates. With this ample supply of potions, they continued battling without interruption for two hours, and the only reason he temporarily halted his grind was that he needed to get some sleep. So after the morning sun had risen, Lu Chen immediately put on his VR helmet again and started playing. However, as the game loaded, he planned to stop hunting snakes and find an easier way to deal with them first. To his surprise, when the game fully rendered, he noticed that his subordinates were still in the midst of a battle with the snakes. This was unexpected, as he thought they should have disappeared the moment he logged out. Not only that, but the monsters were still spawning, which was odd, so he decided to investigate more closely. Into his shock, he discovered that his subordinates had already leveled up to 9. With this, he realized that the three idiots took turns resting and continued to spawn monsters, and since he wasn't around, all the experience they obtained was shared among themselves, allowing them to level up while he was asleep. This discovery instantly made his eyes sparkle with excitement, since he had always been worried about his underlings not being able to catch up to his level, because no matter how much they grinded, the experience points were always set to be distributed to him, and dividing it with them would slow down his leveling speed. However, now that he knows that they could continue grinding while he was offline, he didn't have to worry anymore. Furthermore, the number of pythons he had killed was sufficient to unlock its bloodline in the store. Initially, the 2000 reputation point price made Luchin hesitate. However, 
His decision changed when he noticed that this bloodline had a unique talent, as it could increase his poison damage by 10% every time the target moved one step. This effect lasted for 7 steps, with a maximum duration of 60 seconds. Upon seeing this incredible ability, Lu Chen didn't waste any time and promptly purchased it. He then upgraded it to level 2, adding 10 points of poison attack, enhancing it to 68, and it automatically synergized with the snake's talent and his spider talent. Now his 2.5% damage over time can be enhanced every step his target makes. So even though he looks like a hideous monster that only a mother could love, he was contented since his power level had significantly grown. And with this newfound power, even the snakes that were once a struggle for him were no longer a threat, as his overall damage had doubled due to the new poison effect, and this brought a broad smile to his face. So, he excitedly ordered his underlings to attack as he made plans to clear this map in a single day. And just as he expected, with every swing of his weapon, Luchin asserted his dominance over the enormous pythons, and it didn't take long for him to kill every one of them, and so he was able to finally get to the center of the forest. However, his excited expression shifted abruptly when he noticed the level 12 boss, Avon Hill, the sovereign of this nightmarish realm. Avon Hill was a sinister snake-like lady with a gaze so intense it seemed capable of death itself. Sir, sir! <laughs> Grab me that specimen. But sir, we don't really know what it is. Grab me that specimen. And she was a hybrid creature with spider legs protruding from her back. But despite its intimidating appearance, Lu Chen's fear transformed into curiosity as he assumed this formidable monster must drop valuable loot. Furthermore, the absence of other monsters around Avon Hill added to his anticipation. And with his three subordinates accompanying him, he felt confident that they could defeat her in a single attempt, and so he excitedly charged to smash it. But to their surprise, Avon Hill was just cunningly waiting for them to draw near, as she was the first to unleash an attack, ensnaring them in spider-like silk. Still, Luchin promptly broke free, but it became apparent that his three subordinates lacked the attack power necessary to break the restraints. This left Luchin with no choice but to confront Avon Hill alone. However, battling her wasn't as straightforward as he had anticipated. Her damage output slightly exceeded his own, and she boasted over 4,000 health points with remarkably swift regeneration. Unexpectedly, she also inflicted him with another debuff, reducing both his movement and attack speed by 10%. With this, Luchin realized how terrifying Avon Hill was. Other players would surely meet their demise against her. Fortunately, Luchin wasn't like other players. As he had merged with the spider bloodline, this endowed him with the enhanced movement speed needed to maintain distance from Avon Hill, while his talent enhanced poison skill continued to chip away at her health. Moreover, his subordinates had managed to free themselves from their constraints, making it easier to contend with this formidable boss. But Avon Hill had surprised them yet again, as she revealed that her crowd control skill had a short cooldown, leaving Lu Chen with no alternative but to rely on himself so he focused on inflicting damage over time as he skillfully evaded her attacks, gradually wearing her down. With this tactic, he spent about half an hour battling the formidable boss Avonhill, but his efforts weren't in vain, as Avonhill dropped two four-star materials, five pieces of equipment, including a green helmet and a blue armor. This put a big smile on Lu Chen's face when he examined the blue armor named Avonhill's Guardian. He was surprised to find that it provided the wearer with an additional 21 points of physical defense, 10 points of poison resistance, and substantial stat boosts. But what amazed him even more was that it has its own passive skill, which reduced the attacker's movement and attack speed by 10%. With this insane attribute, it undoubtedly would make him rich if he chose to sell it. However, he decided it would be better to equip it to make his hunting easier. Besides, he knew he could obtain another armor if he hunted Avon Hill again, even though its respawn rate might be somewhat lengthy, similar to Zaka's, who had an 8-hour respawn time. But to his surprise, it only took about half an hour for Avon Hill to respawn, much faster than Zaka's refresh rate. With this, Lu Chen concluded that normal elite monsters like Zaka's had such long refresh rates to encourage players to search for it. However, Avon Hill, as a boss within the poisonous forest, had a faster respawn rate intended to prevent players from entering the main city. However, this situation favored Lu Chen, 
as he could obtain more of Avonhill's equipment, and with his determination, he clapped Avonhill for 10 hours straight, acquiring 17 sets of poisonous mist gear, 19 pieces of Avonhill's guardian armor, 11 exquisite spider silk headgear, and 19 four-star materials. And now that he had a complete set of equipment, he decided to open his eight slots. Even though it cost 4,000 reputation points, it was a worthwhile investment, considering the high-quality helmet with 11 points of physical defense and several additional stats. And with all the hardships he had to endure in the poisonous forest, it was time for him to proceed to the next step, and that is to reward himself by making a fortune. To do this, he needed to check what the other players were up to first. As expected, many players were frustrated due to the challenges of the poisonous fog forest, expressing their discontent about the game's difficulty. However, no one seemed to have mentioned Avonhill's name, indicating that no players had reached the third level yet, and since they had all passed the first level without acquiring any items, this meant that Lu Chen's equipment would likely be in higher demand than he had anticipated. With this, he proceeded to the next step of his plan, and that is to cause a sensation and advertise his items, and that will be easily accomplished by visiting Feng Lingji's live stream. So he did just that, and as expected, Feng Lingji was also facing difficulties in the poisonous forest, which had forced her to teleport back to the new bee village for safety. Despite being in a safer zone, she was still stressed out because she hadn't managed to obtain a single piece of equipment, even though she had specifically been hunting spiders, hoping to find some poison-resistant gear, and having a small team like theirs isn't helping much either, so she feels uncertain about what to do next. While her chat community didn't want to see her like this, so they suggested that she should message Wild to inquire about obtaining equipment, since she is the only one who has him as a friend in the entire gaming community, while some chat members says otherwise, as they were skeptical if he has any equipment to sell at all, since he hasn't been selling for a long time. Still, Lingji doesn't have any other ideas, so she turned to Wild and asked if he had any extra poison-resistant equipment available for sale. She was willing to buy it if he did. To her surprise, Wilde didn't disappoint, as he responded promptly, confirming that he had a complete set of this gear. This revelation surprised not only Lingji but also her viewers. They were even more astonished when Wilde indicated that he had multiple sets available. This caused quite a stir in the game because it was nearly impossible for someone to possess more than one complete set, and so many players suspected he was bluffing. Even Lingji had some doubts as well, but she decided to proceed with the transaction and asked to buy three sets. To everyone's amazement, Wilde promptly sold them to her. With this, Lingji couldn't believe how easily she had acquired these sets, and if it weren't for her live stream, no one would believe her how she got it. With the successful transaction completed, Lingji excitedly equipped her newly acquired armor and expressed her gratitude to Wilde for his generosity. Thanks to this new gear, she felt confident about navigating the dangerous forest, but the shock wasn't limited to her, as her chat was astounded as well. They were even willing to pay up to 15,000 yuan for such items, and just as Luchin had planned, his inbox was flooded with emails from potential buyers. This overwhelming response brought a smile to Luchin's face. However, he had limited equipment to sell, so to ensure fairness to everyone, he decided to hold a personal auction in the auction area tonight at 10, which was just 20 minutes away. And just like that, the anticipated moment arrived. The auction house buzzed with anticipation as a diverse crowd of players gathered, all eager to secure their own poison-resistant gear. And right at the center of this bustling scene was a striking woman, poised to assume the role of the event's auctioneer. Yet behind this facade, one would be surprised to discover that this captivating lady was none other than Luchin himself, wearing an uncharacteristic yet necessary disguise. And although the experience of cross-dressing was far from his comfort zone, he willingly embraced it, all in the name of money, with a mix of excitement and determination. And so he began the auction. Her first offering consisted of three pieces of spider silk headgear. The initial bid stood at a reasonable 2,000 yuan, and participants could increase their offers by a minimum of 200 yuan with each bid. And as the crowd examined the item's statistics, their curiosity quickly turned into fascination as the gear's exceptional usefulness left them in amazement, and many among them hadn't encountered such a remarkable weapon before, a testament to Wilde's reputation for delivering unique and remarkable items. With this, 
the bid reached an impressive 9,800 yuan, which sent waves of excitement through Lu Chen, as it was the first time he had sold an item for such a high price, and this was only a single helmet, so his anticipation grew for what the full armor set might fetch, as it seems like a fortune was well within reach. And since the crowd couldn't wait any longer, Lu Chen moved swiftly to the next item, the one they had all been eagerly awaiting, the Poison Mist set, and to everyone's delight, he had three complete sets ready for auction, all to be sold in a single session, and the starting bid for this is 15,000, with a minimum increase of 2,000. This surprising turn of events caught everyone off guard, since they hadn't anticipated Wild selling these sets as a bundle, as it hinted that there might be more in stock, but the chance to obtain even a single set was too precious to let it slip by. So the players immediately began bidding eagerly, rapidly driving the price up to 45,000 yuan, leaving Luchin delighted as he watched these high spenders invest in his items. In the end, it was sold to bidder number three. After that, Luchin started the second batch. To everyone's surprise, the same bidder swiftly raised the stakes to 45,000 yuan once more, trying to establish a monopoly. However, other businessmen in the audience were not keen on allowing this, especially considering the fact that there is three novice village merged in the level 10 main city that can be influenced by the first group who arrived there. And so, the competition raged on, and the price quickly shot up to 50,000 yuan, further fueling Lu Chen's excitement. But the fact that he still had another batch to sell, he reserved his celebration for later and promptly proceeded to auction the final set. This time, it consisted of five sets packaged together, prompting the starting bid to be set at 25,000 yuan. Still, the players showed no hesitation in driving up the price. With this being their last chance, they pushed their bids to the limits. Yet the room fell into silence as soon as they witnessed one audacious bidder place an astonishing offer of 90,000 yuan. With this, the other players could only curse as their chance to farm easily slipped through their fingers, so they were about to leave the place with heavy hearts. But before they could do that, since the auction was very successful, Lu Chen decided to give them a free tip. He informed them about another terrifying level beyond the snake tide, which left the player shocked, as they had already struggled with the snakes. So hearing about an even more challenging level made them skeptical. But this was to be expected, and so Lu Chen decided to just show them a proof, another piece of equipment from that level, that can determine whether they break through the forest. The blue great armor of Avonhill, seeing this item for themselves opened their eyes in surprise as it was the first blue item in the entire server, and it also had a unique skill. So everyone prepared their bank account to snatch this equipment, and seeing that the players couldn't wait any longer, Luch and auctions it in batches of three, and humbly started the bid at 15,000, and as expected, the bidding price instantaneously skyrocketed, as they believed it was a valuable item, and so the bids reached 60,000 at the first batch. 65,000 for another, and 63,000 for the final one. So even if it took more than an hour to sell everything, Lu Chen was more than ecstatic with the results, as he had amassed a total of 397,980 yuan, with this substantial amount in hand and his arm fully healed, along with some returning sensation in his leg. He pondered the idea of purchasing a house, however, he recognized that spending his entire wealth all at once wouldn't be a smart decision. So, he resolved to continue saving until he had a bit more before making such a significant investment. But now that he was alone, he realized he had sold a significant amount of equipment at once. This made him wonder if someone else might break through the forest and get ahead of him. However, he decided not to be bothered by it as he knew there would be more opportunities to find valuable equipment in the future, and he needed to sleep to be in optimal condition for the next day, and so he did just that. Meanwhile, inside the game, the players that have bought a gear from Wild was too excited to sleep, and so they gathered inside the forest and joined their forces to conquer and get out of this place to get to the main city, and even though a few of them died in the process, they still continued, pushing through the Horde of Spider, onto the tides of snakes. They have continued this until it was almost 5 in the morning, and with their determination, they have finally managed to pass through the snakes, and it seemed like Lingji's group is the first one that have arrived this far, other than Wild, but just like what Wild had told them, Avonhill was there to greet them with her devilish stare. 
and since only I'm Wild had killed this boss all on his own, everyone assumed that their chances of defeating her were higher, and the fact that they can go to the main city after defeating her made them excited, but their enthusiasm dwindled rapidly as Avonhill leaped towards them with alarming speed, catching them off guard, and so it didn't take long for Avonhill to entangle them in her web. With this, they were left wondering how Wild had managed to conquer such a beast. However, they didn't have time to dwell on such trivial matters, as they realized that their efforts of grinding for a whole night was all in vain, dying instantly from Avonhill. A few moments later, the sun had completely risen, and so Luchin as well, and he has already put his VR headgear to play again, but now he made the decision that it was time for them to leave the novice area, but before that, it would be a waste to not learn Avonhill's field control. So he purchased the yellow level spell inductions for the cost of 1,000 reputation points, which he found to be a reasonable investment. To his surprise, when he opened the reputation store, he discovered that the price had doubled, but fighting with the system wouldn't get him anywhere. So, he proceeded with the purchase. After acquiring the spell induction, he promptly used it on Avonhill to gain her skill, the Silk Entanglement, this skill allows the user to employ spider silk and wrap it around the target, while consuming one mana per second, and he can entangle a maximum of 10 targets. However, for non-spider species, it required an extra portion of tough spider silk for each target they entangled. Thankfully, Lu Chen had wisely accumulated a considerable stockpile of spider silk in advance. And now that he had successfully acquired the skill, he felt there was no longer any reason for him to linger in the novice area. Therefore, Lu Chen made the immediate decision to depart. Ten minutes later, they reached a crossroad, with one path leading to the level 10 main city, and the other is leading to the mountains of beasts. And due to Lu Chen's current status, heading to the main city seemed unwise. Therefore, he made the decision to explore the Hundred Beast Mountain first. To his surprise, this path led to a colossal mountain, indicating the beasts here were equally enormous. Despite the looming challenges, Luchin had no other immediate options, so he pressed on with his three subordinates. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.